The number one skill most Roblox developers are lacking is business. I see too many devs focusing so hard on getting great at building, scripting, modeling, UI design, animation, and GFX, but never building the skills that will actually make them money. This is why most devs stay broke. It's not about a lack of skill. It's about a lack of business acumen. Most devs have a good amount of skill. Most people who can build or model or script have the ability to make good things, but what they lack is the ability to market those things to other people. And what happens is most devs get trapped in the starving artist dilemma, where you're very passionate about your work, you make high quality things, but you don't get paid what you feel you deserve. But here's the reality. You do not deserve money just for making something. Most devs think that just because I'm creative, my game will blow up. Just because I make a game I'm passionate about, I deserve players. But if you don't make that game aligned with what people actually want, and you don't put it in front of them, it will never grow. Same thing goes for devs who take commissions. A lot of devs will say, well, I put out commissions and nobody's buying it. <sighs> Everyone's just ignoring good work. And what they're doing is they're having a victim mindset. They're saying, oh, well, everyone just can't see how great my work is, whether that's their game or their commissions. It's all their fault. They just are ignoring true creativity and skill. But this mindset holds developers back. Devs who make money have a mindset of self-responsibility. Devs who actually get players and make money from commissions and get views on dev content and sell dev assets or game templates take responsibility for the entire process. They say, you know what? My success or failure is my fault. And this allows them to see when they make mistakes so they can correct them. Most devs are blind to their mistakes. They put out commission work. They post it on Twitter. And then they just leave it at that. They don't think about how to network, how to reply to people in the RTC and start building up a following or some friends. No, they just expect people to magically reward them with commissions by just posting it once and forgetting about it. But they don't see that they are failing to properly market their work. So the most important thing for you as a developer to reach success is to internalize the strategy first mindset. And the strategy first mindset is built on a foundation of agency, of self-responsibility, of saying, look, it is my job to make my game get players or to make my dev content channel get views or to make my commissions take off and get a ton of orders and get consistent clients. And because of this, we see strategy first developers getting ahead of hobbyists. We see people every day blowing up with games that the hobbyist hive mind likes to call low quality slop and all these steal games, simulators, my singing games are getting a lot of players. Meanwhile, hobbyists say coping and say, well, it's not that my game, my passion project sucks and isn't aligned with player desire. It's that the players are just stupid. They can't recognize true creativity. And I've seen countless comments like this on my channel. Like Players can't recognize creativity. Players don't know what a good game is. And this right here is another example of hobbyist victim mindset cope. I, as a strategy first developer, say it is my fault if my game fails. It is my fault if I put out an offer for commissions to people and nobody buys. It is my responsibility. And that means I'm going to analyze the feedback. I'm going to see what I did wrong and I'm going to adapt. Players are joining, but they aren't buying game passes. Okay, what is it about this game pass that isn't appealing? Okay, we're going to add new passes or we're going to change this one. Or my commission work. Oh yeah, I'm posting tweets about it, but there's no pictures in the tweets. Well, no wonder people aren't going to buy my building because I'm not showing it. So I'm going to add on some images. Oh, look, I'm still not getting any orders. Okay, I need to start networking with people. So I'm going to start replying to big accounts in the RTC with my own opinions. I'm going to model after tweets that I see working well. Like I see that people give out a free GFX template or a free stud style build pack. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a free resource for devs who follow me and like the post and retweet. And then I'll message them or use an auto DM tool to give them all a free resource. Boom, you just found a way to grow your account because you took responsibility for the process and you were thinking from a strategy first mindset that says, hey, look, I must make a strategy to succeed as a developer, no matter what domain I'm entering. So when my results are bad, I'm going to see what I did wrong and I'm going to see how I can course correct to improve my results. 
and this is why we see so many hobbyists failing because they think that passion magically will take them to success and when it inevitably doesn't they don't take responsibility they end up blaming the players for all their problems they end up blaming the clients people just can't recognize good work no you failed to market you failed to sell people on what it is that you made my channel took years to build up and the only reason that i was able to grow it to over a hundred thousand subscribers is because i took responsibility and i said hey look okay these videos on how to get a free Roblox hat and, and trading aren't blowing up. So I'm gonna stop making those and I'm gonna change what I'm doing. I'm gonna make more dev content. So eventually I shifted from doing random Roblox topics, a little dev content sprinkled in to doing all dev content all the time. And because I did that, and because I made a strategy to grow my dev YouTube channel, I was able to build my channel to the point that it's at now. That was only possible because I had the right mindset and I took action on it. Same thing goes no matter what Roblox development career path you're currently on. Whether you're making games, you're taking commissions, or you're making dev content, you need a strategy to make your Roblox development career work. And you need to put strategy before passion. Now, strategy first is not strategy only and passion never. It's strategy first, passion later, or passion integrated into what I'm doing. So when you're making a steal a game, yeah, you might make that game based on Steel of Brain Rot and the style that is popular, but you add in your own creativity and your own passion in your unique take on it. So there's a lot of different Steel of games out there, Steel of Developer, Steel of Game, and these games inject creativity while following a trend. If you want to move your Roblox development career forward, you need to take on a strategy first mindset. Roblox is no longer just powering imagination. Roblox is powering business first, then imagination. And this shift has happened over the last several years, and most people haven't woken up to it yet. When you say that, people will say, oh, that's heartless, that's cold. They start judging business in this emotional way, rather than just accepting, hey, business is part of the process on Roblox, and in fact, it comes first now. It is business first. Passion first worked back in the day when there were less competitors. There were less developers on the platform. There were a lot less game. And in that less competitive marketplace there was less supply to fulfill the demand of players so almost any decent game could blow up back in 2012 but now we live in 2025 and there's so much supply to fulfill the demand that your game has to be better than all these other games to have a chance of growing and have a chance of getting players now the problem is the hobbyist mindset will say well a good game is all subjective. It's all based on what I like. It's all based on having an open world map like Skyrim and having every single model PBR textured and having the bark of each tree drawn on a Wacom tablet by hand and scripting countless complex systems. And if I don't do that, my game is garbage. That is what they think instead of saying, okay, that's what I like. That is what I as a developer enjoy, but the players have a different perspective. You need that understanding of the player's perspective you need that empathy in a sense in order to properly make something that the market wants you got to be able to step into their shoes and players don't care about how your game looks they care about fun above everything else if your game looks like a masterpiece if your game looks like real life but it's boring nobody's gonna play or very few will that's why frontlines got some players and it blew up on the media and then it fell off because the game is a very realistic shooter and it was impressive for Roblox's standards. But once you play the game for 20, 30 minutes, you quickly realize that it's boring. And you go back to a game like Grow a Garden or Steal a Brain Rot because those games are actually fun, despite what you think about it. Because a lot of people will say, well, those games are just stupid. They're stupid to you. But to most players enjoying games on their iPhone, they don't want a complex game. That's why we see all these simple games succeeding. Now, can complex games succeed on Roblox? Absolutely. But most players are on mobile, and most players are young. And on mobile, they want simple games, just like the App Store. On the App Store, Clash of Clans, other simple games, Paper IO 2, these are all successful. And mobile app developers have been strategy first from the start because people didn't have the nostalgia that they hold to Roblox. But now on Roblox, it's shifting from this nostalgia-based, passion-only platform to a business-first platform, and most devs aren't ready to make that shift because they're too stuck 
clinging to an old Roblox that doesn't exist anymore. But strategy first devs anywhere, whether they're on Roblox or on the App Store, don't judge what's successful. Or they put their judgment aside. They say, okay, Paper IO2 is what's successful. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to adapt it into my own approach. They don't sit there and say, well, Clash of Clans is just low quality cash grab slop. I can't believe anybody would ever want to play that. No, they learn from what works. And it's time that developers on Roblox do the same. It's time that devs take on a strategy first mindset. They realize games take a lot of resources to produce. And me as one person, I need to make simple games first and build up gradually in my career to making better projects to making those more complex games i want to make and also i got to realize that yeah there is an audience for those games like the older audience on roblox and the pc players even though it's smaller there is still a sizable audience but for most devs those games are only possible to make when you have a full stack team of devs behind you who are hardworking and reliable who you can pay a good amount of money to and when you have 10 million robux you've earned from simple games it's a lot more feasible to go and make those passion projects but when you're new, it's not a good idea. And I've seen so many devs, even my own friends, I've talked about this before, who will start Roblox development, try to make this complex game, and then realize after they start working on it for two weeks that it's gonna be too hard to finish, and they burn out, quit, and give up on Roblox development forever. I don't wanna see this happen to more devs. I wanna see you do something different. So click this video here to learn more about the strategy first mindset and the correct way to approach Roblox development in 2025. See you there.